Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. What a bright and lovely late summer evening it is here tonight at the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History as we rededicate our historic B-29. My name is Jim Walther. I am the director of the National Museum of Nuclear Science and History, and I will be serving as the MC for tonight's proceedings. We have several speakers this evening who will share some remarks about the aircraft and about the history of this product of the Boeing Company, and we're honored to have them tonight. I'll introduce them as well as a number of other of our very special guests and make recognition of those that are donors to this project. As you might imagine, this project has a lot of supporters. In fact, today we had another major gift come in and we were very honored to have that. This was the first time the museum has tried a Kickstarter campaign, and it scared the poop out of us, but we did succeed. So we're gonna do it again. You know, that's the way we are around here. So tonight, we'll have a wonderful time, hear from some fine guests to speak with us this evening, and from that, then, we will proceed back into the museum where there will be a lovely reception. There will be a movie that is about the B-29 created by one of our very special uh, friends and promoters of this and other aircraft we have here. And then we will uh, have a members uh, information meeting, which is something the museum does every year. So members who are here this evening, if they'd like to join and hear a little bit about the museum and its success this year, you're welcome to do so. So, I'm going to start by making a few uh, introductions and also recognizing the donors for this very special project. Now, as I said, there was a Kickstarter campaign for this, and we had people, uh, 531 gifts, everything from $5,000 to $1. And the major contributors are going to be recognized this evening, and when we have the final presentation of uh, the labels that would be around this aircraft, those people's uh, names will be uh, forever and recorded there so that people will know who participated. want to note the various uh, sponsors of tonight's event. The Paul G. Allen Family Foundation. In memory of Mary Ruth Dernbauer, Clay Perkins, Platinum Builder Corporation, Dwayne Hughes, Pam Sullivan, Will Ferguson, Michael Klager, Lawrence Coston, Jerry Adams, Milo and Ellen Myers, Christine Stitchman, John Stitchman, Keith Tolk, Mac McCloskey, and the American Society of Radiologic Technologists. Each of those groups provided support to tonight for making the aircraft restoration possible. This B-29 was brought into the American stockpile to help win World War II on August 9th of 1945, 70 years ago, two days ago. And so this is a historic aircraft, one of only 17 left, and we're honored that we were able to mount an effort to put it together and make it beautiful once again. It had, as you may recall, been a bit dog-eared over the years, and so it was in need of some support. Continuing with recognition tonight, I want to make a special note to the person who is in charge of these projects here, Major Jerry Hanks. Let's have a round of applause. Jerry is the historic park restoration coordinator for the museum and has done a superb job once again. Last year, if you recall and were with us, the F-16 was commissioned and is now a permanent recognition of the TACOs, the 150th Air uh, Wing here at uh, New Mexico Air National Guard. Thanks to Jerry. We have with us tonight Bill Waldman, who is U.S. Senator Tom Udall's field representative. Bill, it's nice to have you join with us tonight. We have Major General William T. Collins from the United States Marine Corps with us tonight. Thank you very much, General. Mr. Kurt Sorensen, representing the Boeing Company here tonight with us. 
In addition, Lieutenant Governor Diane Dennis is here with her husband, Herb Dennis. A dear old friend of mine from the museum field, the executive director of the Flying Heritage Collection, Mr. Adrian Hunt, is with us tonight. Thank you for coming, Adrian. We have the incoming president of the Board of Trustees of this fine museum, Ms. Allison Schuler, with us tonight. Thank you, Allison. A very kind and generous donor tonight here with us, Marsha Montemayor, is with us. Thank you, Marsha. Representing those that helped us with all of the products to make this possible, Cliff Sandoval from Ahern, Wes Weiss from Napa Paints, Sal Riccabini from Riccabini Pavers, the people who make the pathway here. We had Major Brian Stotts, USMC from Ditra here tonight. Captain Michael Riley, commanding officer of UNM's NROTC unit. Thank you for coming. A very important partner to this museum, J.B. Henderson Construction, our neighbors across the street. Jim Kaiser with us this evening. Jim, thank you. Brigadier General Gary Hobbs from the USAF, thank you for being with us. Kenneth and Mindy Knoll, who are filmmakers, and you'll enjoy their work tonight. Also, Ben Hanks, son of BJ and Jerry Hanks, who has been an important volunteer. Thanks to Ben and to his friend Norm Scott. Brad Stoddard is here tonight. Brad, thank you for coming, filming tonight, and we'll share his presentation. We have representing the New Mexico National Guard Chief of Staff, Colonel Ken Nava, U.S. Army, 150th Special Operations Wing. Commander Colonel Robert Reiner, Vice Commander Jim Dixon, Dixon, Colonel Jim Dixon, thank you. As you can see, many, many people participated in this project. In addition to those that I have now announced, let me just also note Sandia National Laboratory's Photovoltaic Systems Evaluation Laboratory, Sandia's Non-Destructive Testing Laboratory, Engineering Sciences, Explosive Sciences, and Environmental Sciences all participated in the restoration project. In fact, at one point they looked under the skin of the B-29 to see if it had nose art from way in the past, and it did not. You'll notice that the B-29 is lighted, just like the F-16. There are lights on this plane, and that is courtesy of Aquila Technologies, makerspace of Montrose, Colorado. This is a wonderful thing. Thank you for your help with that. Let's give a big round of applause to those that helped to make the Kickstarter campaign come to fruition the development department and the marketing department, among many others at the museum. Uh, we have with us Jennifer Hayden, Director of Public Relations and Marketing, as well as Jessica Tonjes and their staffs, as well as museum curator and the interns and volunteers who participated in that project. And now it is my distinct honor to begin to introduce to you tonight the three gentlemen who have come this evening to make a presentation and provide a few remarks. First on our list of those who will say a few words is Bill Waldman. Bill is Senator Tom Udall's field aide, a friend of this institution. Both Senator Udall and Bill are often found here, and we're honored to have him here for a few remarks. Thank you, Bill. Thanks very much, and we'll hope to, uh, to deal with this wind as we can. Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words on this terrific occasion. Senator Udall would like to have been here today, but he's out of the country fulfilling his responsibilities to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. He was here last November for the F-16 Tacos Display Grand Opening. Had a wonderful time, especially with Jerry's grandson. They uh, had a, a, the nice words together. The Senator's father left college uh, after two years and served four years in the Air Force as an enlisted gunner on a B-24 Liberator, flying 50 missions over Western Europe from Italy uh, with the 736 Bomb Squadron, 454th Bomb Group, for which he received the Air Medal with three oak leaf clusters. So restoring this plane from the era of the greatest generation 
holds much meaning for the senator. As many of you know, Senator Udall serves on the Senate Appropriations Committee where decisions are made on how to spend your tax money. This year, he was appointed to important subcommittees for New Mexico. These include the Military Construction and Veterans Subcommittee and Defense Subcommittee. As the name implies, the first deals with construction of housing for airmen and cannon, or the construction of two important buildings at the Air Force Nuclear Weapons Center at Kirtland, and facilities across the country. It is also responsible for dealing with issues involving our veterans, from delays in hospital appointments to ensuring that benefits are paid in a timely and complete manner. As many of you know, when Senator Udall was in the House of Representatives, he was on the Veterans Affairs Committee for eight years. So straightening out the operations of the VA is very important to him. The Defense Subcommittee provides funding for three, for New Mexico's three Air Force bases, the Air Force Research Lab, White Sands Missile Range, Fort Bliss, and air bases, ships, missile ranges, et cetera, across the country. So while there are no longer the congressional earmarks, which, which made it possible for providing funding for specific projects, this committee provides the opportunity to protect New Mexico's bases and grow the military presence here in New Mexico. As a result, New Mexico continues to play its important role in the nation's defense. So thank you again for the invitation. And like everyone here, a big thank you to Jerry and all those who worked in this terrific restoration. In a small way, you were helping to preserve the heritage of this great nation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill, and thank you for sharing those kind words from the Senator. It's now my distinct honor to introduce to you Major General William T. Rock Collins, Commanding General of the 4th Marine Aircraft Wing. General Collins is with us tonight with his lovely family, and we're just honored to have them join us. His biography is astounding, and as I suggested to him that if I read it all, we'd be here all evening. And he said, no, please don't do that. So let me tell you a little bit about his more recent activities. In August of 2012, Brigadier General Collins assumed command of the 4th Marine Aircraft Wing in New Orleans, Louisiana. Shortly after, Brigadier General Collins retired from the United Airlines, and he currently is employed with CSI Aviation and President and Chief Executive of Operating Officer. General Collins assumed the rank of Major General on March 11, 2014. Major General Collins' personal decorations include the Legion of Merit, Meritorious Service Medal, Gold Star in lieu of Second Award, Air Medal, two Gold Stars in lieu of Third Award, with Combat V and Bronze Numeral IV. Navy Commendation Medal, Gold Star in lieu of Second Award, with Combat V, Navy Achievement Medal, two Gold Stars in lieu of Third, Outstanding Volunteer Service Medal. Truly a person that any of us can look up to for his service to our nation, and we're honored to have him here tonight. Please welcome General Collins. Thank you, Jim. I gotta tell you, it's an honor to, and a privilege for me to be here and speak to each and every one of you tonight. And it's really an honor to be standing here in front of such a, an airframe that has delivered an incredible legacy to our heritage and history of our nation. And in fact, we're often reminded that just 70 years ago, seems like a long time to many of us here, but it's not that long in terms of, of history of our nation. You know, last week I was at the museum of the Smithsonian at Udvar Hazy Museum, where the Marine Corps was delivering the last CH-46, which we commonly refer to as the frog. And it has it is faithfully served our nation through six decades. And most of you probably are familiar with its service in Vietnam, but I gotta tell you, it served long and hard and faithful service all the way through to this generation as we just retired it last week, and I was there and got to see that uh, as it was one of my squadrons that delivered it to the Smithsonian. It was one of my airplanes, so it was a real honor to be there. But while I was there at the Smithsonian, I walked through the museum to take my place out on the parade deck that was just outside it for the delivery and fly-in of the airplane, and I passed an airplane that was known, that many of you know so commonly well, as the Enola Gay. And as I passed underneath it, I found myself in that reflection. And I, uh, I know how important that airplane was 
in our history. You see, it was we've, we've already kind of mentioned about August 6, 1945, as it was the first airplane to deliver an atomic weapon over Hiroshima. And I found myself wondering, what was it like to be a crew on airplanes like that? And I got to tell you, I can't imagine those thoughts are, are unique among myself. I'll bet that each and every one of you wonder what it was like to be a crew on a mission such as what the Anola Gay flew on the 6th and the boxcar flew on the 9th. Well, I'm, I'm here to represent the crew today in the eyes of a combat veteran. You see, I've been in those shoes and I can fully understand. I know what it's like to plan that type of mission. I'm probably the last of a dying breed in the United States Marine Corps when we had to. Be. I know what it's like to die in the war where you don't know when you're going to come back. You don't know when you're the outcome, you don't know whether you're potentially going to be a prisoner of war. Because what, let me tell you, when you get in an airplane, you launch, and you fly 1,500 miles one way, deep behind enemy lines, it's significant. It's a significant challenge to your brave young men and women that have gone before us in that time to be able to strap that airplane on their back and go deep behind enemy lines. It's, it's another thing once you're in the mission. Because once you're in the mission, you're on government time. Those feelings, those nerves, those apprehensions, those thoughts leave you. Because now it's all about mission. It's about doing what you've trained so hard to do and accomplishing what you set out to do. I know what those those crews went through in 1945. I know it firsthand. And I'll tell you, I also know what it feels like to come after you. You've had a successful delivery. And you've been shot at tremendously. And to fly away and see the secondary explosions. And see those that cloud build high into the sky. It's an incredible feeling. It's one that you'll never forget. For those of you that, that have flown those kinds of missions, you understand where I'm coming from. For those of you that haven't, I'm sure that you can put yourself in that situation and understand it. But let me tell you, when you, when you go and you talk about the target area and something as significant as these airframes have accomplished, there's a lot that goes into it. It just isn't the mission of the day. It just isn't the airframe. It's all about the people. See, the people, it starts a long time before. And in this case, the delivery started with the development of two funding. Billions of dollars went into the development of the, of the munitions that were delivered. People designed the, the munitions that we see behind me. Scientists right here in the local area. The engineers have designed a technologically airplane that was able to go that long distance, 1,500 miles one way out of Marianas when it launched at Atinian. And it goes and gives credit to the Marines that captured those islands in the Marianas, and even the 4th Marine Division that captured Atinian, to preserve that, that area so that we were now within strike of the mainland of Japan. It's about the Navy Seabees. The men and servicemen that went in and constructed those airfields. There's a lot of links in the chain that lead to success. And this airframe that we're here to dedicate today is part of the links of the chain. And it's, it's, it's absolutely essential that we are able to preserve our history have museums such as this to put these things in there to speak to future generations so that they understand through the symbolic that each one of these airframes represents 
the history and the efforts that it was the men and women and people that were behind ultimately the successful day on August 15th when the Japanese ultimately surrendered. Early in September, they signed or made it official. And this airframe performed unbelievable feats beyond just the two deliveries. It performed missions where it, it had multiple attacks on the mainland. It performed the delivery after the surrender very significant. The delivery of food and rations to the POWs that were, were on the mainland in Japan. So, how thankful can we be, 70 years later, to be here, to be gathered amongst us, and we celebrate this airplane, this dedication, for this, but really what we celebrate is the ingenuity and the drive of America to succeed and, and have perseverance for victory. Thank you, General Collins. Those were moving words, certainly true words, about the importance of this airplane and those that flew it and those that made it possible. This airplane is a Boeing product, as are many of the airplanes here at the museum. And we are pleased to have tonight with us a member of the staff of the Boeing Company, who is part of the chain that the general spoke of for this museum, for we have had a great relationship with the Boeing company over many years. We are pleased to have the Boeing B-29 here on display, as well as we have the Boeing B-52 and the B-47, among a number of other products that are Boeing or Boeing Heritage. Those are companies Boeing purchased and now own. So I'm pleased tonight to introduce to you for a few remarks Mr. Kurt Sorensen. Let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Sorensen. He is a Lobo. He graduated from UNM. All right, a Lobo. He had his BS degree in mechanical engineering and worked on the Eclipse Aviation products, the Eclipse 500. He is a mechanical design engineer for the Compact Laser System, which is a Boeing product here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, currently working on that project and he's been with Boeing for 10 years. We're just glad to have him here with us tonight to share a few words from Boeing about the history of the Boeing products and about the heritage of this aircraft. Thank you. Welcome, sir. So I realized, fortunately for Jim, that my bio was as short as it was. But thank you, yeah, I am Kurt Sorensen, and I am from the Boeing Leos site. If you're not familiar with it, Leos is laser and electro optical system. And um, we primarily design high energy laser systems for specific military applications. But we also provide for the Air Force's Starfire optical range, which is and we also provide engineering support for the Air Force Maui telescope complex down in Maui. Uh, when I first saw this invitation email come in, I was hoping it was going to be at our Boeing Maui site, but uh, unfortunately, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we are part of a broader organization, and we have sites in Ohio as well as Utah. And those sites support the Minuteman nuclear missile program. Um, we are proud to be here. We're honored to be able to support such an amazing museum and such an awesome restoration project for this B-29. The majority of our employees here in Albuquerque are local, and uh, we're excited that we can uh, bring our family and our friends out to see this and share this uh, with you guys, and uh, be able to see this link. Uh, from our Boeing heritage and uh, this, this amazing B-29 uh, all the way up to uh, our Boeing future uh, laser weapon system that we're doing here in Albuquerque these days. These days. So uh, we're excited to be here. Thank you very much. Um, we're honored to be a part of this program.
Thank you. Thank you, Curtis. We are indeed honored to have Boeing as a partner here at this museum. As you know, we have here the Boeing B-29. It is uh, beautifully repainted, and in, in addition to that, you will see that there is a newly installed Fat Man casing and a shipping crate behind it. I hope that as you enjoy the airplane, you look around and see those objects which help to characterize the total exhibit that has been put together. As you know, we're not done yet. We will continue with Operation Preservation and our next target, the B-52. And believe me, the top of the wings of that thing are as big as a half a football field. And at 315 bucks a gallon, you can bet the paint's going to be uh, expensive to do it. There is still a raffle going on. Tickets are available in the museum store for $50 or 125 for three. Be a fighter pilot for a day. Here's your chance. And all proceeds go to Operation Preservation to help us to prepare for the B-52's restoration. We will then continue after that with our A-7, our F-105, touch up on our beautiful B-47, and then move on into Rocket Park. So it's, uh, it's job security for Jerry Hanks, don't you think? Yeah. Once again, Jerry Hanks, folks, our restoration coordinator. We're honored to have had our special guest tonight. All of you who are with us, our speakers, the Major General, Brigadier General Collins, Bill Waldman representing our fine Senator Udall, and Mr. Sorensen from the Boeing Company. It is now the conclusion of our event. You're welcome to enjoy time out here in Heritage Park, but we will start with refreshments inside. We'll begin a movie, and then in a little while we'll have our information meeting. Thank you for being here. We're pleased to have each of you. Please, if you're not a member tonight, see Hannah Costello and join. Thank you.